السلام عليكم طلاب كل عام وانتم بخير ان شاء الله تنعاد عليكم بالصحه والسلامه ان شاء الله تحقيق جميع الامان اليوم عندنا لكتشر اسمها اكسدونشيا ان تكنيك اوف فورسبس اكستراكشن General arrangement or consideration for extraction. First is light. Of course, at the beginning we need a, a, a good bright light uh, so that we can identify the tooth to be extracted, and we have a clear vision uh, of our uh, operative field. Second position of the operator. This has to deal with the place at where the uh, operator stands when he extracting certain teeth. So when gen the general rule is when we extract all the teeth, we stand in front of the patient or at his right side of the chair. But except for the uh, lower right mandibular teeth, including the molars, premolars, and canine, when you're extracting the right mandibular uh, teeth, molars, premolars, and canine, you have to stand behind the patient. This is of course true for the right-handed dentist. For the left-handed dentist, he should stand behind the patient when he's extracting the lower mandibular or the mandibular uh, left molars, premolars, and canines. Three position of the patient. This has to do with the reclination of the chair. So when we extract uh, maxillary teeth, the dental chair should be reclined posteriorly uh, so that when the patient opens his mouth, the occlusal plane is almost 60 degrees to the floor. While it has to be reclined slightly anteriorly to a lesser degree so that the occlusal plane when we extracting lower teeth, it has to be parallel to the floor, as you can see in the figures. Height of the dental chair. When we extract mandibular teeth, uh, the oral cavity or our uh, operation site should be leveled below the, the operator's elbow. While when we're extracting the upper teeth, uh, the oral cavity should be leveled with the operator's elbow or should be below the shoulder by about 8 inches almost uh, 16 centimeters this whole thing of uh, position of the patient the operator and the height it's actually meant to make the dental extraction as ergonomic as possible and both safe for the dentist and the patient the golden rule here is you have to assume a position where you can provide sustained continuous force of extraction without injuring yourself or the patient. So whatever makes you comfortable, unless uh, someone else observe, observe it. Like next year when you start to uh, extract teeth for actual patient, uh, you will see that we can always, we, we will always uh, check your position and check the patient position in order to optimize the extraction process. Now we'll talk about the actual technique of forceps extraction. Uh, so what do we do when we start to extract a tooth? After giving the uh, patient local anesthetic, uh, we start by soft tissue retraction. This actually is done by using a blunt instrument, either a, uh, a dental probe or a tweezer. Uh, that is, will be inserted into the gingival sulcus aimed to uh, separate the attached gingiva from all around the tooth down to the alveolar bone. And what is the, <clears throat> what is the uh, advantages of doing such thing? These are the points, which is to avoid laceration or uh, tearing of the gingiva uh, during extraction. It is also represent a very uh, good test for your local anesthesia, which is, it has to be profound before commencing the extraction, otherwise the patient will get hurt. 
uh, and it will actually allow the beaks of the forceps to be positioned more epically without interference or impingement of the gingival uh, tissue, which is a very uh, important step in extraction, uh, as I mentioned in the previous uh, lecture. Handling of the dental forceps. The dental forceps should be grasped uh, in a way that uh, after grasping, the thumb should be below the hinge joint and the little finger is uh, usually used to open the forceps and after opening the forceps the little finger will be rotated outward to uh, used uh, with the grip another thing is for the uh, maxillary forceps it has to be handled where the bend of the handle should lie or rest at the palm of the hand the dental forceps is grasped by the working hand, which seems to be the uh, most commonly used hand is the right hand, uh, but what about the other hand? The other hand is called the supportive hand or the non-working hand. Uh, learn this very carefully. The supporting hand is as important as the working hand. We have to apply support by the other hand to the teeth that are, uh, or to the segment which are, uh, uh, which including the tooth to be extracted. So, why would we do uh, support for the uh, area to be uh, extracted? Well, it will aid in reflecting the soft tissue. It will provide better visualization for the operator. Uh, it will stabilize the patient head during the extraction because if you are extracting the tooth and you start to apply forces the head of the patient will, will wobble all the all over the place so you have to make it stable it also uh, help in preventing injury to the temporal mandibular joint in case of extracting mandibular teeth uh, and sometimes even uh, to prevent uh, jaw or mandibular dislocation uh, it also provides a tactile sensation for the operator when you start to move your tooth buccolingually. You will start to have uh, some sort of a tactile feedback about the extent of the mobility because you will apply your finger exactly at the uh, alveolar bone against the tooth to be extracted. And this is extremely important. Application of forceps ablates to the tooth. Now, as mentioned in the previous lecture, the blades should be selected well, and then it should be allowed to move epically, as epical as you can go, in order to grasp the tooth. Uh, as you see in the figure below, there is a star in the middle of the root. This is the center of rotation. Uh, each time you, you grasp the tooth more epically, you will move the center of rotation more epically, and then you will reduce the uh, probability of root fracture. After this, you have to hold the tooth as firm as, you, as it possible. Uh, and then you will start to uh, make your uh, mobility. But keeping in mind, it's a very good practice to do certain things. For example, to apply the blades of the forceps to the less accessible side of the tooth. يعني مثلا إذا تشلع لور 7 وما دشوا في ال lingual side فبالبداية تخلي lingual blade أو beak lingually تقعدها مضبوط بعدين تكمل مالتك الابليكيشن على البكل side بعدين تبدي تدفع تجاه الابيكل surface uh, also for extraction uh, movement uh, it's better to start toward the carrier side إذا عندنا tooth which can be carries خلينا نقول buccally فمن ألزم خلينا نقول هذا اللور 6 مثلا أوكي و buccally ال ال wall مالته كلش be carries فمن نلزم التوث نكمل مالتنا ال grasp مضبوطة نبدي نتحرك buccally لو lingually أول شي نتحرك دائما ال rule ال rule تقول إنه نتحرك دائما باتجاه ال carrier side لأنه حقيقة نحن حنسلط أول force مال extraction 
فاحنا نريد الجهه اللي تتعرض لها الفورس تكون قويه كفايه لتتحمل الفورس بدون ما تنكسر فبيش حاله انا اريد يصير البريشر اعلى شيء على اللينجوال وول اللي هو ساوند اكثر من الباكل وول اللي هو كله كيريس حتى ما ينكسر التوث اذا بديت باكلي وهو كيريس ممكن راسا يصير بي كراشنج اوكي Also, the surface of the blades of the forceps should should lie as close as possible to the surface of the tooth. هذا معناته شنو معناته إنه تحاول قدر المستطاع إنه تختار forceps, the beaks مالتها أو the blades مالتها designed for that tooth. بدون يعني ما يرهم الجيب مال مثلا lower six تشلع بيها مال upper six and vice versa. اوكي فدائما طبعا الرول الاصليه تبقى انه دائما البيكس تكون parallel to the long axis of the tooth. The displacement of tooth from its socket <coughs> meaning the extraction of the tooth. Now the, we have certain movements these are outward movement which is labial or buccal, inward movement lingual or palatal and rotary movement or rotational movement. The <coughs> Uh, usually the uh, the rule of thumb is you start by moving the tooth buccally as in uh, the figure to the uh, as you see in the figure at the first shape to the left and then you will proceed to the palatal surface and then your movement will start to increase gradually uh, and the tooth start to loosen up until you are able to pull it out as for the rotational movement uh, It can be used as a primary movement uh, for conical rooted teeth, the anterior teeth. Uh, but for multi-rooted teeth, you usually start with a labiobuccal, lingual-palatal movement, and then you can combine with it a rotational movement of some sort. A figure of eight usually is used. The purpose of extraction movement is for cutting the tooth attachment, separating the tooth from the wall of the socket, uh, dilatation of the bony wall of the socket utilizing the resiliency of living bone, and the removal of the tooth from the socket. This is why we need to move the tooth around so, to, uh, so that we can achieve these objective and finally to pull the tooth out. You can see here in the uh, figure, uh, the first figure to the left, uh, that uh, the movement is started and then the, the grasping the tooth in figure A and then it started moving labially, then goes back palatally and then you can see in shape C uh, that the, there is a rotational movement as indicated by the arrows and then the tooth is Uh, pulled out. This is a single rooted tooth and then there is a, a maxillary molar a grasped epically and then started buccally and then palatally and you will continue uh, this movement with a, a slow steady continuous force. The most important thing is that the force is not excessive and it's not jerking movement or rocking movement. يعني ما يصير تأتعت almost when you are extracting a tooth at the beginning of extraction almost you cannot not notice the hand of the operator moving this how slow and controlled force it has to be inshallah sana jaya nshawfkum shan tabdun tishla'un shwaya shwaya nodur musab ya post extraction or extractive care of extraction wound أول شيء نسوي we have to make sure that يعني من, من نسحب التوث من السوكت أول شيء نسوي نباوع على الأبكس مال التوث مو نذب رأسا بالكدني دش نشيكا نباوع عليه زين ومرات مو بس نباوع عليه نطخه بالفنجر الزغيروني مالتنا uh, to feel for any sharpness or fracture uh, بالتب مال الروت also We have to examine the socket for any loose fragments. مثلا قطعة من الإنامل انكسرت قطعة من الأملقام calculus any foreign body ممكن باقي بالسوكت لأن هذا ممكن يسوينا inflammation. نتحسس أيضا السوكت بأصبع الصغيرونين. شيء كذا أكو any sharp bone after the extraction. وإذا كان موجود فنستعمل بشي حالة bone file النعم هذا البون اللي صاير حاد كلش. 
وراها وي هاف تو سكويز ذا الفيولار بون لانه احنا بالبدايه ما حركنا التوث باكولينجوالي وصار بي اكسبانشن فعاده احنا نسوي سكويزنج جنتل سكويزنج للسوكت للالفيولار بون حتى نرجع الكونفيجريشن او الشيب مال الالفيولار بروسس مثل ما كان قبل الاكستراكشن وي اولسو هاف تو تشيك ذات ذا سوكت از فيلد وذ بلود انه مو كلش ناشف لان لازم يصير بليدنج بالمكان على مود يصير كلوت حتى يبدي يصير الهيلنج and uh, eventually we will have to place a properly sized gauze or piece of cotton usually 2 by 2 centimeters over the socket وانتبهوا على الاوفر لانه ما يصير تتخلف داخل السوكت تتخلف فوقه بنفس الوقت <تصفيق> كلش مهم انه uh, تتاكد انه الجوز مالتك ما صايره على الاوكلوزال تيبل مال الادجيسنت تيث احنا نريد البريشر هي بريشر جوز احنا نريد البريشر يتسلط على الاكستراكشن ووند اونلي اذا كان صاير بين الاسنان معناته حتصير ما حتسلط بريشر عالي على المكان مال الاكستراكشن وبالتالي فائده البريشر جوز انه هي حتقطع لنا البليدنج فاذا ما متخلايا صح فوق السوكت حيبقى البيشنت يصير عنده بليدنج بعدين من يشيلها حيقول لك الدم ما وقف عندي وعاده تنتهي بالانفلاميشن Now the extraction has finished. We have certain instructions to give to the patient. He has to abide it. For the beginning, we said that he has to be on this gauze or the gauze that we left for a period of 45 minutes at least. And continuous pressure. If you have a patient, you have to focus on the patient for a period of time. Because this is your responsibility. You have to focus on it. You have to make sure that you understand what you are saying. مو يقعد يسولف او يتمضمض او ياكل او فد شيء اثناء ما هو حاط القطمه ينتظر نص ساعه يعض مضبوط حتى من يذبها يكون البليدنج مقطوع. Also we instruct the patient not to spit ممنوع <تصفيق> عفوا يدفل المريض ممنوع يتمضمض بيوم الاكستراكشن يعني ورا ما يشيل القطمه. لحد ثاني يوم ممنوع يتمضمض ممنوع يتفل ممنوع يسوي حركات قوية مثلا يمد لسانه بالسوكت حتى ممنوع يستعمل قصبة لأنه هاي ممكن تسوي نيجاتيف بريشر وممكن تسوي ديسلوجمنت أوف كلوت وتنتهي بالأخير بانفلاميشن فالبيشنت مرات يسألك أسئلة همينة إضافية يقول لك يعني مثلا شلون انا مثلا اريد اتوضا لازم اتمضمض او فد شيء فهم يعني ممكن اتعلمه انه بمي بارد يشرب يخلي مي بحلقه بعدين يخلي المي يوقع من وحده بدون ما يدفع فورسفولي ويمسح المكان بدون ما يعني يبصق المي. Proper uh, analgesics and antibiotics should be uh, prescribed to the patient if necessary وان شاء الله بالسنين او السنه الجايه او بعدها حد <تصفيق> حد تعلمون ايش uh, وقت المفروض بالضبط تعطي انتي بايوتيك اكو بروتوكول ما يصير ينطي هيك شيء عاده الانالجيسكس البيشنت نيد وقوه الانالجيسكس همين انت تقدرها على صعوبه الاكستراكشن اللي صار Also, هذا السؤال اللي كل المرضى عادة يسألوا أول ما نكمل الاكستراكشن يقول لك شو وقت آكل؟ فتعطي الانستراكشن إنه ياكل على الجهة المقابلة للاكستراكشن على الجهة الثانية والأكل يكون only cold fluid أو cold soft diet ومن نقول cold soft diet معناتها ممكن ياكل رقي لبن أزبري آيس كريم يدلل نفسه يعني بس اي شيء سوليد او هوت ممنوع <تصفيق>